Welcome to another Choir Bible Study. I'm Reverend Parker here at Community Baptist Church in Santa Rosa, California, 1620 Sonoma Avenue. If you're ever in the area, call them by. Our service will open at 11 o'clock in the morning, and we'll be welcome to have you come in and join us. Amen. We thank, we're so thankful that you're able to join us again for another Choir Bible Study because God has another great word for us. Amen. God has a word for us each and every day, and we need to study His word to show ourselves the truth. That's right. We need to study so that you will know, amen, that you will know when someone's talking uh, the word of God. Amen? And so, as we get, uh, we thank all of those who continue to give to a cause uh, of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ here with their tithes and offering. We have a safe and secure site for you. It's cbcsr.org. Giving. You can't beat God in giving. So continue to do your best in giving. Uh, you know who you are, and you know if you still want God to bless you more and more, continue to give. Amen. Amen. And so we'll start off today with scripture and prayer. And then we'll get it <clears throat> get into our lesson. Give me here. I got the nickels. 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 I used to have a cat named Smith. He sniffled all the time. I don't wonder about that cat. But he's long, long. Okay. And so as we read uh, Psalms 5, that's Psalm 5, uh, I have the King James Version and uh, whatever version you have, read along with me. Amen. And if we give ear to my words, O oh Lord, consider my meditation, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O oh Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a God that has pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in the sight <clears throat> thou hast. Thou hatest all workers of the nation. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and thy and in thy fear will I worship for thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of my enemy. Make thy way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wicked, is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulchre. They flatter with their tongue. Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsel. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions. For they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them forever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou compass him as with a shield. Amen. I just read Psalms 5 in its entirety. Blessed to be hearing and reading of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, once again, we want to say thank you, Lord, for just blessing us with another day. I beg you, what you promised to any of us, Lord. We want to say thank you, Lord, for all that you do for each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for our pastor to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, asking you, O oh God, to continue to walk and talk with him, Lord, as you continue to walk and talk to with each and every one of us, O oh God. We ask, O oh God, that you continue to uh, open up the windows of heaven and pour him out of blessing, O God. Oh God, so that his cup runs over, Father God. Yes, Lord, his cup runs over into our cup, Father God. Yes, Lord, we want to just say thank you. Lord, we ask, for oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you continue to be with our CDC staff members, ministries, and everyone, Father God, that does the work and the will of the Father. Lord, we want to say thank you, Father God. We ask you to be with Sister Maria and her family, Lord, and uh, continue to strengthen them, Lord. Be with our daughter Hannah, Father God. 
uh, as she embarked upon a new job, Lord, just strengthen her, build her up where she's torn down, Lord. Give her the strength, oh God, to call on the name of Jesus. Be with her son Trevor, Lord. Uh, continue to strengthen him, build him up. Be with her family, Costa Rica, Lord. As uh, Maria continues to do the work that she would have with her, she continues to favor in her life, Lord. Lord, we know that she's highly favored and blessed in your sight. Yes, Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you would Reverend Francis, Lord, <clears throat> and continue to be with him, Lord. And continue to strengthen him. Continue to keep a head of protection on him as he travels the highway to Bowie. As he continues to do the work of ministry that you would have him to do. Lord, we ask you to look upon his family in Louisiana, Lord, and give them all strength that they continue to praise and worship you. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you continue to be with my family, Lord, my wife, my daughter, uh, my daughter, Lord, my grandchildren, Father God, sisters and brothers, Lord. Just my whole family, that whole man, Lord, Lord, leave it all out, man. Lord. Yes, Lord, from generation to generation, Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus, you continue to just strengthen us, build us up with before and down. Lord, we just ask, oh God, that you forgive us of our sins. We know that they be many. We ask, Lord, that you continue to watch us and turn the same with us. The blood of Jesus Christ. We ask you to be with everyone that's watching and that we will we'll watch later on in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. <coughs> Amen. And so, as we get into our <coughs> lesson today, it comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 14 to 36. I have a King James version, but whatever version you have, read along with us. And it reads <coughs> But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your son and your daughter shall prophesy, and your young man shall see visions, and your old man shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaid, I will pour out in those days of my of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor. Of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of, Je Jesus of Nazareth, a man of whom God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. <clears throat> Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up having loosened the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw for saw the Lord always before my face, but he is on the right, my right hand that I should not be moved. <clears throat> Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither suffer thou, thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to be the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and in his sepulchre uh, is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with the oath to him, that the fruit of his line, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left, neither his flesh did see corruption. 
this Jesus as God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed forth then, which ye now see and hear. For David has not ascended into heaven, but he said, said to himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foe thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Amen. And our key verse is comes from Acts chapter 2, verse 14. Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said unto them, said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my word. Let's read this lesson today. Uh, this lesson today is complete transformation. Complete transformation. Let us read it together. Can you remember the first time you were truly excited about learning something new? Maybe it was the day you learned how to ride your bike first bicycle. Or days you tried to pedal without trip tipping over, but you continued to fall. Finally, one afternoon, it all came together and you knew exactly how to do it. The disciples knew that knew that feeling, knew that feeling. Jesus had spent three years with them. His crucifixion had left them despondent and lonely. But the resurrection changed their view. For the first time, they grasped what he had been saying. <clears throat> what he had been saying. Can you imagine what it was like to be, be with Peter when he finally understood? Acts chapter 2, verse 14 to 36 provides this account. The man who stood up and spoke on that day of Pentecost was not the same man who denied Christ on the night of his arrest. What changed Peter was not merely being around Jesus. The indwelling of Christ's spirit made the transformation complete. Make Christ the focus of your days and emphasize of your an emphasis of your uh, of your praise. He knows where he is leading you. He is aware of all that is needed to make your life complete. Neither should you become discouraged of the times you fall short of your expectations. Allow God to be in control and you will discover freedom like any, unlike any you have ever known. And all together at the bottom, oh God, oh God, oh God. You are the focus of my life. You are all I need to make my life complete. You are in complete control. You are free to set me. Amen. And like I said, this lesson is complete transformation. So let's look over this lesson and see what we can glean from it. See what thus says the Lord here for each and every one of us. Amen. This lesson is talking about the complete transformation of how we start out doing something. And before we get a true grip on it, we have to stumble before we walk. As a child being born, you know that you, as a baby, you crawl first. Some of us roll around before we crawl. And then once you crawl, then you stand up. And then once you stand up, you take that first step. And once you take that first step, then you start to walk. It's a transformation here of uh, coming from being on the floor to standing up and maturing in the way to walk. It's the same way with what we do with learning the word of God and trusting what God says. Uh, the disciples had to go through the same thing. Uh, Peter was making it very clear that uh, they had witnessed the return of Christ. It was only through the return of Christ that they truly understood what Christ was talking about. Uh, he quoted them because of the Holy Spirit that they dwelled in, that spirit of truth that finally hit them early in this chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 1 through 
through four, when the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were on one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it was filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like a fire, and, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues. Uh, and the Spirit gave them utterance. And everyone in Jerusalem heard them. Every man heard them speak in his own language. That's verse 6 of chapter 2. And that's what happens to us when we are finally letting go and we're finally allowing the transformation to take place, when we're finally starting to believe that God has saved us, that God is working in us, that God is doing what he said he would do. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11 says uh, that the Father knows what he's planned for each and every one of us. And it's not a plan for uh, destruction, but it's a plan for hope and a faith in him. As it reads here, it says, um, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, and when ye shall search for me with all your heart. When you search for God with all your heart, he said, you will find him. And so this is Peter then here. The Holy Spirit is dwelling here. Uh, they were being transformed. They had already been transformed. And now they're sharing. The Holy Spirit is upon them. And now Peter is letting all Judea and all the people in Jerusalem uh, that dwell at Jerusalem, that uh, they, the, the, the disciples weren't drunk, that they were filled with the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Paraclete. They were filled with the spirit and they spoke with cloven tongues, like cloven tongues. Um, and the Holy Spirit, the Spirit gave them utterance. And so you could imagine Peter at that time uh, who had denied Christ three times. Christ told him that he would. And, and you got to understand, Peter had to be reminded, was reminded every day when he did. Every morning that that rooster crowed, Peter knew that I denied him. That's a hard thing to carry with you as you're being transformed, you know, in the renewing of your mind. Paul writes that in uh, Romans 12, 2, that uh, we are not to be conformed to this world, but to be renewed by the, uh, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It's a transformation, uh, because why? God can't use any of that stinking, 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 stinking that we have of this world. God wants us to think uh, like Christ, and he wants to see us uh, acting according to being obedient to his call. And we've all been called with the Holy Call. Don't think that your calling is just the ordinary call. Um, Ephesians 4, 23 and uh, 24 says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. There's a new life that God has for us all, a life in Christ, a life that he wants us to live. And as Jesus said, he came back to give us what? An abundant life. So we have that abundant life with him right now, this moment, this time. And so we know that God is transforming us to think on him. Now, Peter was quoting this. He quoted John, uh, Joel, chapter 2, verses 28 of Joel to 32. That whole thing that Peter spoke of at that time, that was all in the scripture. Now, that was 
some 400 years ago. Okay, this is the New Testament. So he had quoted that from the scroll. He was giving utterance from the spirit. And so he was quoting that, that was already written, that Joel had already, was already, that was already prophesied. Uh, I think God told Joel that, and I want to check that out for a second. Mine. Just to see who told who to um, And that was God. Yeah, yeah. A promise of outpouring of the Spirit. That was God promising uh, what would happen, that the, His Spirit would be an outpouring. And so that Spirit was being outpoured uh, among the disciples, and they were able to tell others about Jesus the Christ. Just like if the Spirit is in us. Jesus said, I'll leave you, but I will send another. It was important that. Christ leave so that the other will come. Who is the other? The Holy Spirit that indwells you. And we understand that the Holy Spirit is very powerful. Okay? Um, that Holy Spirit is very powerful and that we need to understand that um, we have that Spirit in us, those who believe. And it means here in John uh, that fourth chapter, that fourth uh, verse, it says ye are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world in the world and so we know that we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit God has an eye to us um, and it says in verse 6 we are of God he keeps telling that we are of God he that knoweth God hears us he that is not of God hear not Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. He said, you'll know the truth by what people say and who they profess as God, as our Lord and Savior, not Jesus Christ. They don't say Jesus. They, they're not of the spirit of God, the spirit of truth. They're being led by some other spirit. But this is a transformation of your thinking, a transformation of your mind. And that's where all of it starts at. Because now the battle is with the spirit and the flesh. And the flesh loves this world. And we know that sin indwells us, right? We all know that. Paul makes that very clear in um, oh, Romans, that chapter that seventh verse. It talks about the indwelling of that spirit. Paul says here in that seventh chapter, uh, let's see. Uh, we'll say. 19 to 23, and it means for the good that I would, would do, that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I would not, it is no more that I that do it, but it's a sin that dwelleth in me. I find a new law that when I do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, that's the spirit. But I see another law in my memory, born against the law of my mind, get that? The law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my memory. And then I got to read one. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Uh, so then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. See, it, it's in the mind. That's a transformation. Completely being transformed. And it's a work in progress, people. It's a work in progress. We all need work, okay? And we can be confident in this very thing. Philippians 1 and 6 says, we can be confident in, in the one that chapter 1, verse 6 says, uh, being confident in the very thing that he would begin a good work and you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. God is doing a good work in us. Can not the potter do what he wants to clay? We are the potter. Uh, we are the clay. He's the potter. And so as he smashes the clay down, he builds it up. And so some things he gets that little device and he starts trimming it off. Of those things that he can't use in his kingdom. And you should be thankful. Jeremiah 8 and 16 lets us know when, when God is talking to Jeremiah and sends him to the potter's house, the, the, the clay master, and, he, and, and Jeremiah sees 
the, 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 the claim after making the claim, he's even smashing, and then the voice of the Lord starts speaking to him, letting him know that, cannot I do what I want with the claim? We are that claim. And so God continues to shape and mold us. That's why when you pray, you pray for God to help you. Okay? Continue to shape and mold you. Because we all stand in the need of God helping us. Amen? He says, here, uh, it says, what changed Peter was not merely being around Christ. No, not, what, that wasn't it. It was the indwelling of Christ's spirit made the transformation. That's why you got to get that word in you. You got to, you can't be on a, 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 a holy diet. A holy diet is not eating at all. You just, you just diet. Meaning you come to church on Sunday, get your holy book on, and then you close the book Sunday night. I mean, soon enough, before then, you close it right up the surface. And you never open it up again. And that's a diet from God. That's not wanting to know anything. And then somebody reads the scripture from you, where's that in the Bible? You should know where that is. You should know where that's coming from. You know, you should know the history of what God is trying to show us. He's showing us people who we knew who were a broken vessel. Everyone in the Bible is a broken vessel. And God says, I still use them. There was none righteous. No, not one. God says in, in Romans 3 and 23 that we all fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short. We mean we're all in the same boat. We all need complete transformation. And that's what this lesson is all about. Being completely transformed by the spirit of Christ. Amen? It says, make Christ the focus of your days and the emphasis of your praise. Making Christ your focus of the days helps you to get along through that day. And when you're praising God, when you can think of God, you can let a whole lot of stuff go that would utterly just tear you apart and keep you focused on that whole thing. Because I say that flesh loves this world, so the flesh is always going to think about this world. When you know that you already have the victory in Jesus Christ, amen? And so we need to focus on it on your day, just a day at a time. Amen? And emphasize your praise. Giving God all honor and glory and praise. It all belongs to him. And you need to make that your focus. Why? Because he knows where he is leading you. Come on, somebody. God knows where he's leading you. And God wants to lead you in the way of righteousness. Amen? That's why the renewing of your mind is very important. That the complete transformation. Um, let's see here. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. Paul writes about pressing toward that mark, that call of the high price. Oh, look at this. The high price. Yeah, verses toward that mark. So that uh, Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. And it means, not as though I already attained either, were already perfect. But I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Then he goes, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the pride of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, he's telling all of us, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, uh -huh, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. And that's what Paul is saying. We need to press forward to the high calling. It's not a low calling, it's a high calling because it's a holy calling. And that's the transformation that we're all making. You gotta continue to press through. Um, it says that he is aware of all that is needed. What? Needed for what? To make your life complete. Jesus says in Matthew 6 and 32 that the Father knows your needs. He knows your needs. So he knows, if he knows your needs, he knows where he's leading you. Amen? 
And so we need to make sure that we are doing what? Matthew 6 and 33, seeking God first, right? Seeking first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all things will be evident there, but seeking him first, asking God to lead us, asking God to guide us, asking God. Why? Because God is in control. It says, neither should you become discouraged. And we know that it's discouraging time for one of those transformations. It was a discouraging time as he started to walk. In the story here, as the, as the guy was learning to ride the bike, a discouraging time there because he kept falling until you learned that I need to balance myself. Yeah, and once I got the handle of the, the, the idea of how to balance myself and riding the bike, and that's without turning the wheel, is you learn to just keep this, the, the bike steady and straight, taking your time, pedaling, pedaling. And so we have to keep pedaling, pedaling, moving forward with God. Amen. Neither should you become discouraged over the time you fall short of your expectations. God knows that we're going to fall short because God knows the part. Yes, God knows us. In Jeremiah 1 and 5, God says, What? I knew Jeremiah. He said, Jeremiah, can I tell you something? And Jeremiah goes, yes, Lord. I'm sure he said, yes, Lord. Because that's what I want to say. He said, before Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Now, God is a spirit. So God knew Jeremiah when he was a spirit. God is a spirit. God knew that we, we were spirits at one time and still are. We're spiritual beings having human experiences. He said, before thou camest forth out of the mother's womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Now, he may not have made you a prophet unto the nation, but he has made you a child of God that you should tell somebody about Jesus. Amen? That you should be able to be a witness and evangelize to others and bring others to Christ. You can't save them, but you can share the good news. They may not suffer the first time, but you can still uh, be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen? Because you shouldn't be ashamed. As Romans 1 and 16, Paul writes, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God uh, unto salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also to the Greek. And so we need to understand that you can't be ashamed. I mean, you want a shame out there when you were running the street and doing what you were doing. So why be ashamed now? Because we're a born again. And I think that's what happens with a lot of us. We get, oh, I don't want to talk about the quiet. Don't be quiet. You want quiet when you're out there in the world, talking all loud. Now all of a sudden you're all old. You are, but come on now. You got to share the good news. Don't hold it to yourself. It says. Allow God, to, uh, allow God to be in control. You have to allow God to be in control. You can't be at the wheel no more. You gotta, you gotta take, you gotta be like this day in the back seat. Okay, you got, you gotta just let God lead the way. He wants to guide you. You need to follow Him. You know, and so you, you, it says, and you will discover freedom unlike any you have ever known. And that's what you got to understand. Why? Because God uh, needs to be the focus of your life. God uh, uh, is all you need in your life to complete you. And God is in complete control. And God has set you free. He says, those who are in Christ are free indeed. Uh, and so we need to understand that God is in control. Amen. God is truly in control, as it says in uh, Corinthians. He says that Second uh, Corinthians, the fifth chapter, the seventeenth verse. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new, a new creature. Old things are passed away; behold, all things become new. You are new. There is a transformation happening in you. And so we need to allow that transformation to take place. But it's going to take some work by you, amen? It's going to take some work by you because God has made a way for you. Um, in Colossians 3.10, it says, And have put on a new man, which is renewed in the knowledge 
after the image of him that created it. There's, you gotta put off the old man and put on that new man or woman or child. You gotta just open up and let uh, God do what he's going to do. Let him transform you, amen? And let that word of God transform you. And so that's what a complete transformation is. The disciples showed it, and others throughout the Bible have shown how they were transformed. And so we know that we uh, we can be transformed if we, by the renewing of our mind. And so we have to get into the word of God. Amen. We need to study his word daily. daily. Give God some time. God is waiting for us to catch up to him. Amen. And so we need to uh, know that we have the ability to do it. You got caught up in this world, in the iniquity of this world, and God is saying, now you need to renew your mind with complete transformation. Amen. And so I'm Reverend Parker here at Community Baptist Church. Thank you again for another choir Bible study. And we hear Community Baptist says, a church that prays together stays together. So let's continue to pray for one another and love on one another in Jesus' name.